Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. We're not at the farm, but we're at SIUE. We've got a different video for you guys today. We got these guys standing behind me. Uh, Charlie's wearing jeans, so is uh, Charles, so am I. It's a waste up presentation today. <laughs> um, so I we uh, we built a jig over the past year and we put together a video over the last week and we're gonna show it to you guys. We just got done giving our presentation, that's why we're all tied up. And uh, yeah, it went really well. So hopefully you guys like it. If you stick around to the end, I'm gonna throw a little bloopers reel together of all the mess ups that we had and I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. We are CNU Design Group 2, sponsored by Treller, Cool and Die. This is our project, the Sheet Metal Plastic Bag Manufacturing Jig. I'm Charles Ferrato. I'm Charles Meeker. I'm John Renner. And I'm Kyle Reed. So here at Treller, Tool and Die, we specialize in designing and manufacturing uh, sheet metal stamping dies that go in big mechanical punch presses like you see behind us. We also do large and small production runs. Um, so our project is based off of one of those production runs. Um, this part is for a heat exchanger. Uh, so we start out as a flat blank. It's going to be bagged. As you can see, there's draw lubricant on these. Uh, in this first station, there's a deep draw where it takes this flat piece of sheet metal and it turns it into a, it, it puts a cup inside it. Um, so this draw lubricant reduces the friction between these pressure pads and allows the material to flow. Um, Per the customer's orders, um, we're not supposed to have lube on the finished part, so that is why we're bagging the blanks. Um, so these first two stations are deep draw stations. Uh, the bag will come off. Um, then we'll have a, it'll make some trim cuts, and it'll also pop the holes. Then we'll come down and wipe down this edge, and put a 90, and then after that, this is our finished part. So as you can see, there's two different size blanks, two different size parts that we're going to be bagging. Um, so we're turning the flat piece of sheet metal into a finished part. So here we're going to take a look at Charlar's original solution to their, to their problem. Uh, you can see their blank, their corners are exposed and it leads to a lot of ripped bags. The employee has to reach down and grab the bag from down below and try and flip it over to the jig and uh, try to avoid the corners ripping it and then he grabs the, the blank and pulls it overhead which is hard on the operator. Um, it's good to note that the original cycle time for this jig was long because of the one and three rip bags that occurred while using it. Our customer needs included reducing the scrap rate of these bags to less than one percent, reducing the cycle time of bagging the blanks to under 30 seconds, also staying within OSHA standards by improving the ergonomics to shoulders to mid thighs while lifting the blank out of the jig. It is required that our final design can function with two different size blanks as shown. Both blanks get bagged with one size bag that is 36 inches long by 24 inches wide. Analysis was the main driving factor of our design process. The three main all-encompassing design styles we performed were FEA, pneumatic force analysis, and time analysis. Analysis led to the final 3D model on the left shown in the CAD program. You can see it compared to the final physical prototype on the right. Let's take a look at how this was manufactured. So this is our overall final design. Uh, we chose air to be our power system because air is uh, readily available at each stamping press at Chellar. Uh, so we have an air cylinder right here. It goes through this top plate 
and drives this middle plate. It's connected right here. Uh, we have linear ball bearings locating this plate. Uh, those linear ball bearings ride on a case hardened shaft. Uh, this upper assembly is also connected to this middle plate. So that is what drives this up and down. Uh, on top of that, we have these locator guards. These locator guards is what the sheet metal blank will sit inside and will protect the bag from the corners of the sheet metal blank. So as you saw in the video prior, the operator had to reach down below, rip off the bag, open it up, flip it over the jig, and this resulted in a lot of ripped bags and it was uh, costly as far as time goes. So we incorporated a reroll jig. This flips the bags around and gets the opened end facing out. That way the operator can pull the bag over this new jig and down over the blank and it makes it faster and results in less rip bags. So the pneumatic system starts here on the back side with the regulator. Shop air comes in at 120 psi and this regulator brings it down to 60 to 80 for our application. So from the regulator it's split two ways. In the first direction it's going to come up through the handle and hit our three-way valve. The three-way valve then splits it to two directions for the double acting cylinder using or putting force in both directions. And then for both ends of that cylinder, you've got flow control valves so you can control the speed without adjusting the regulator. On the other end from the regulator, it's gonna run the air down through into the bottom plate where there's fixtures on these guard poles. And the, the fixtures run air up through the guard poles to open the bag up further and keep the bag from sticking to these poles. So our main concern was safety when making this jig. And we uh, designed a two inch gap in here so that way nobody could get caught and to keep people out, people and debris out of the vertical motion assembly, we made these guards that wrap the jig entirely and protect the components and the operator. Part of the issue with the original jig is it had to be moved with a forklift. So in our jig here, we used four sets of casters, two that are stationary and two that swivel. These swivels have a lock so it can stay stationary. We also have a handle right here for ease of use and this makes it really portable. So we ran an entire FMEA for this project and two of our biggest concerns were what happens with this vertical motion plate when we unhook and hook up the air. So with the lever in the upward position like you were just done, um, if you unhook the air, you can see that the vertical motion plate goes down very smoothly and there's really no concern of somebody getting pinched because in our design process we added a little two inch gap here so that way it takes something pretty wide to get caught in there. Uh, when you plug the air back in, this is only in the upward position, but when you plug it back in, the plate does come up, but we put the regulator on the back, so that way, if one person's operating this, when they plug it in, they're away from the vertical motion plate, and there's no concern of getting hit. We came across a problem in our original design. When we tear off the bag, the bag tends to fall back. To fix this problem, we implemented a stop bar design. This helps keep the next in ba line bag in place when we rip it off problem we ran into a stress on the cylinder. We found that there's no buffer inside the cylinder so when this 72 pound assembly comes down all of that weight is metal to metal contact which causes a lot of stress. So to reduce this we found compression springs through a data table on McMaster car that slow the fall when it comes down to the bottom and then also added rubber bumpers so that the cylinder bottoms out on the rubber bumpers versus on the inner workings of the cylinder. So when you hear it come down it's very quiet. So in our original design, we had this bottom pole fixed on one side. Uh, we felt like that's not, it wasn't supported well enough, so we added supports on two sides. Uh, both the top and bottom poles ride on stripper bolts. Uh, we made a, that design change for ease of manufacturing, and it was strong enough for the application intended. So originally in our design, we had this lever mounted flat to the surface, which made it hard to access because he had to bend over and it was close to a possible pinch point. So to prevent this, we created a handle that not only raises the lever half a foot so it's easier for the operator to reach, but also pulls it farther away from any sort of pinch point. This also improves our pneumatic design because we're able to run the pneumatic lines down through the lever out, out the back where they're actually supposed to be. Whenever we're gonna run this job, the first order of business is get the bags re-rolled. So as we explained before, they come rolled the wrong direction where the closed end comes off. So we're gonna go ahead and put them on the first re-roll pipe. And then there's directions on here. And we're going to feed them up around the new reroll pipe in the correct direction. 
And all you have to do is get a couple of rolls around it and there's enough friction that it's going to hold and be able to re-roll the rest of the bag with the drill. So the drill goes on. And you can see how tight it actually re-rolls. And once this is done, the bag's going to be coming off the open end so you can pull it right over. Then once it's done, you have to do the last little bit manually. Pull the bag up through the stop bar. Pull the stop bar down and you're ready to go. So currently we're working on the big blanks. We're going to put the blank in the jig, motion the lever to go up, open up the bag, slide the bag over, motion it to go down, tear it off, and it's ready to go. So the process is going to be the same for the small blank. We're going to place the blank in, motion the lever to go up, open up the bag, put the bag on, tear it off, lower, and it's ready to go. The beta testing took place in two phases. The first phase focused on the reroll assembly and consisted of three trials of rerolling the bags while being timed. The cordless drill used was operating around 300 RPM. As you can see by the resulting data, all three trials were consistently under one and a half minutes, following the expectations due to analysis last semester. The second phase of the beta testing encompassed the entire system. The test consisted of bagging 100 blanks of each size and recorded the cycle time of each trial and any instances of the bag being ripped or a blank being lifted overhead. It shall be noted that a Chellar employee conducted all testing to ensure unbiased results. The average cycle time of bagging the large blank was 13.22 seconds. As seen by the plot on screen, the cycle time trended downward over the course of testing showing the benefit of practice and experience when working with this jig. The results of the small blank were similar with an average cycle time of 14.2 seconds. These times were below the 30 second customer goal and the 15 second analyze goal. It shall be noted that no bags were ripped and no blanks were lifted overhead showing that all customer goals were met. For further comparison to the original process, the average of the three reroll times was taken and the individual time per bag was calculated. This time was then added to the average cycle times of bagging the small and large blanks, providing a completely fair comparison of time to the original process. Here is the specification chart we've been using throughout our one year building this jig. The rightmost column is the most recent, that is our, our beta testing and our final design. Our weight and size are both below the cap that we set last year. It's also good to note that the cycle time, which is the average between the large and small blank, is well below the 30 second goal at 13.7 seconds. Here's the Gantt chart we used throughout this semester. It encompasses everything we did over just this semester. We used it extensively to keep on track between uh, manufacturing and all of our uh, prototype dates and everything, and it ensured that the project was completed on time. Looking back at the budget, we were able to stay cl fairly close with our estimated budget. We did go over $84, but this was due to various design changes as stated before. We would like to thank Chellar Tool & Die for sponsoring this project and allowing us to use their manufacturing facility. We would also like to thank Renner Stock Farms and Dr. Den for making this project possible. At this time, we'll be taking any questions.
Hello everyone, we are Senior Design Group 2, sponsored by Cheller, Cool and I. This is our project, the Sheet Metal Manufacturing... No. <laughs> Start over! Cut. <laughs> Yourself? No. I was waiting for him. He's sucking on his thumb. Leave him alone. <laughs> Alright. Ready? Yep. Hello, everyone. Fuck. How do you guys make me right. laugh? Well, guys. Do I need to do this? Hey, John Ritter from Ritter Stock Works here. <laughs> John Ritter, please. Our customer needs included reducing the scrap rate to less than 1%. Right. Improving the ergonomics um, by keeping within OSHA standards between shoulders and mid thighs. Good, good enough. So we came across a problem when we ripped off the bags. Uh, so we came across a problem in the original design. When we tear off the bag, the bag. Also, what on what? When you're down there after the cast, you know, if you can swivel with locking, we've also included a hand. <laughs> we've also included okay. a handle. Somebody else have to put it in, like yeah, always? No he can never hit the hole. <laughs> Ready? No, not yet. Oh. It's rolling. Schmidt, I'm thinking. Alright. We'd like to thank Chellar Tool and Die for sponsoring this project and letting us use their shop. And this time... <laughs>